Welcome. Do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Let's take a look at the late Alafi, the boxer who lost Palace Torch because of Fela's mother. If father was a king, so was his grandfather. Obalamidi Adeyemi the third also died a king. He reigned for over five decades, the longest in the history of the Alafi throne. Royalty did not just fall on his lap. The deceased monarch earned it. When the history of monarchy is told in Yoruba land, the Iku Babayeye, as he was fondly called, would have his pride of the palace. A story was once told of how a Yoruba king divisively pumped his counterparts at a meeting of royals in the southwest state. This had earned that monarch the sobriquity, the boxing king. But why this king caught the headlines over such ignominy? The late Alafin was a good ambassador of boxing. Obalamidi took to boxing while growing up in Lagos. When Oba Adeniro Adeyemi II, the late monarch's father, was on the throne, he did not allow the young Lamidi to stay with him at the palace to enable him to have practical life experience and prepare for future challenges. He was first made to stay in Ishenyi in Oyo, where he acquired Quranic education. Instead of allowing him to stay back at the palace after his Islamic education, his father sent him to live with the then Alake of Igbaland, or Baladakbo Ademola. The young Lamidi lived there until the abdication by Oba Ademola. The Agba monarch was forced to quit following the agitation against taxation imposed on women. The protest was championed by the revolutionary Mrs. Fumilayo Ransom Kuti, the mother of Afrobeat legend Fela Anukolakbo Kuti. After Oba Ademola's exit from the throne, Oba Ademola's father insisted that the young Lamidi must remain with him, because as the Yoruba adage goes, a pigeon does not dine and wine with its host and forsake him in trying times. But Oba Ademola pleaded with his friend to allow the young Lamidi leave so that his education will not suffer. Oba Lamidi's father then sent him to Koforola Abayomi, a medical doctor in Ikoyi, Lagos, and he was enrolled in nearby Obalende Modern School. Obalinde was tough and to survive bullying, the late monarch registered with Broadway Boxing Club, where the owner of the club, Mike Fadikbe, coached him. The environment where I was brought up, Obadondi, was a tough place. It's a place where you have different ethnic groups cohabiting peacefully. Obalinde was a center of sporting activities like hockey, football, and others. I was a footballer and outside right player. But boxing became my favorite in order to escape being bullied and a whipping boys to others. Also, I realized early that I needed to develop a strong character to weather the storm of this life, Obalamidi recollected in an interview with Tribune. Obalamidi rose to become a knockout specialist in competitions inside Glover Memorial or Lagos Island. Unlike many boxers, the Alafin was a two-fisted pugilist. He was gifted with the ability to use his two fists effectively to destabilize opponents and make them to kiss the canvas at early rounds of his bouts. In an interview with Oyo Inside, an online platform, Obalamidi spoke of his prowess in the ring. He said, I have had over 56 bouts and lost two. In my bouts, only 10 people who contested with me lasted the distance. I won the others by knockout, but I have never been knocked out. Let me tell you a little secret inwardly. I am not a very happy person, so boxing is an interesting outlet for me. When you have a grudge, you don't feel pain, says Obalamidi. Obalamidi rewrote common interests and came second, chose two schools which he wanted to go to, and eventually he picked one. He chose to attend St. Gregory's College of Balinde in accordance to his guidance wish. Obadei Yemi III lived in tough areas of Lagos Island, places like Faji, Oluwogboro, and the famed Ojulomokoto. 
His father, though not read, appreciated the value of education through the contacts he had with the British administrative officers that came to the old Oyo Empire. Consequently, he lived to five tooth and nail to see that his son was well read. Obadeyemi III left St. Gregory's College with very good grades and had the choice to study law, economics, or public relations. He chose to study law because he felt his future in law was secure. Little did he know that fate had other plans in stock for him. His quest for law changed when his father was deposed on February 4, 1946, two days to his planned travel to abroad. He was offered a job at the Royal Exchange Assurance Marina, Lagos. Obalamidi succeeded Alafi Badegesi Ladibolu II. This happened shortly after the end of the Nigerian Civil War when Colonel Robert Adeyinka Adebayo was the governor. Then, he was working as an insurance clerk. According to records, the contest to Obalamidi's emergence began in 1968, when he was invited along with 10 others from his ruling house to contest for the vacant stool of the Oyo Empire. As it was the custom of the land, there were three parameters with which they were judged. First was eligibility, second was popularity, and the third, the stamina for the ill responsibilities of the office of the Alafim. Obalamidi emerged the first, defeating ten others after a rigorous screening exercise. Obadeyemi III was elected the winner and was finally chosen by the king mem- king- kingmakers on November 8, 1970 and crowned on the 4th January 1971. For many in contemporary times, the late monarch married many wives, the number over between 12 and 15, but the figure is infinitesimally when compared to that of his father, who reportedly had over 200 wives. The monarch set tongues wagging when he took his last wife on the throne last year, a 22-year-old queen of Southeast extraction. He had married two, wi- two of his wives, Alaji Olori Abibata Deyemi Iadodo and Alaji, sorry, and Alaja Olori Ramat Adedayo Adeyemi Iya Ilekoto before his ascension to the throne. One of the dominant issues about the Alafin's death, especially on social media, is the fate of his wives. Trust Nigerians, they widely circulated the pictures of the king and his wives, whom he was proud of in his lifetime. Obalamidi loved women, young and beautiful ones at that, and he never hid this fact. He said, God has given me some type of ability and grace to keep a woman, especially beautiful women. I don't disclose my conversations or activities with one wife to another. I maintain a strict code of confidentiality and I've learned that I must positively make an impact on people and make a great first impression. He said, of course, sometimes I have disagreements and conflicts of opinions, but I have been graced by God to know how to ensure that the conflicts don't escalate. He had said this in one of his numerous interviews. Well, Obalamidi died at the age of 83. But 10 years before this incident, there was a tension in the palace over his near-death experience, which he shared in the interview with Tribune. He said, When I was 73 years old, I had a race from the palace to Doba and back to the palace. That race marked a turning point in my strenuous physical exercise. I did the race in my usual non-stop pace. I finished up in the palace, but as soon as I left by the bedroom, I crashed. My heartbeat increased alarmingly. I laid down, seeing stars. The heart was beating continuously and dangerously. I was there on the floor, and I told my wife that my time was up. Because that was on my thought. Quickly, Dr. Adams came, observed the rate of the heartbeat, and did some treatment. For about five hours, I was in that emergency in the palace. There was tension in every part of the palace. I did not know I could survive it, but I thank boxing for having taught me endurance and how to handle such circumstances after I had stabilized. 
I traveled to London where I saw my doctor. He told me if I had fallen down during the ways, I would have gone. He then advised me that before I embark on physical exercise, I should make sure I check my BP. Well, one wish he made in his lifetime was to return as a king in his second coming to the world. He stated, My experience on the throne has been very taxing. I have to settle disputes and know all the laws, even the modern laws. If I am to come again to the world, I would definitely like to come back as a king, he noted. Well, enjoy your new abode, or balamidi, or laiwala atonda adeyemi, for I believe knows no second coming on this side of the planet. Awolo sunre ukubabaye oba alade. Well, May his gentle soul rest in perfect peace. Do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And to those that have been supporting us from day one, continue to support us as the good Lord will continue to bless you. Thank you.